Hello and welcome. It's Financial Modeling World Cup weekend this weekend. So as usual, I'm taking a look at the question guide, thinking about what I can prepare, what I can do to help you guys prepare. Uh, this one's a bit of a mystery this time around, honestly. The, the descriptions are pretty vague. Uh, we're told that case two is, uh, is a not very financial case and case three is a very financial case and involves forecasting down to EBITDA. I don't know what that means, so I couldn't think of anything uh, useful to look at to actually prepare for these two. Uh, so I'm just, I don't usually do the short ones, but uh, the short one this time is the first year analyst uh, case, because this weekend is also, uh, or this, this whole set of cases is also, I think, going to be the cases for the Microsoft Excel Collegiate Challenge this weekend as well. So that's why uh, that was there last time around for, uh, for the predecessor version of that, the financial model university challenge or anyway whatever it was before it was called the MECC um, so now it's this uh, this again so uh, this is actually one that probably is useful for me to bone up on because uh, a lot of I have known all this you know first year analyst stuff at some point in my life but can I remember it all now very likely not so I'm going to take a look at the first year analyst uh, short case from last time around ah, why do I keep pressing buttons so I'm close that down. This is the uh, this is the set of questions. Like a lot of the uh, kind of FMWC short questions, uh, there's no model. All the all the information is in here. I don't think there's a lot of educational value in you watching me retype numbers. So I've just uh, you know put all the assumptions into uh, into cells here. So I'm just going to dive in from there. So we've got this hypothetical company. We've got various different bits of information about it. Founded 20 years ago. It's being sold. Um, for a 10x EV to EBITDA, EV to EBITDA multiple. Uh, this is the last 12 months EBITDA. Outstanding bank balance, uh, sorry, cash is 100,000. Outstanding loan balance is 5 million. Uh, paid interest of 200,000. And paid taxes of $2 million, $2 million. So kind of typical bit of misdirection here, uh, which is that you know there's more information here that in question one than is actually relevant to question one. So part of the challenge is to kind of parse out what's actually relevant. So the first question is just what does the John, the owner, receive by selling his shares? In other words, what's the equity value of the company? So first thing we can work out is uh, the enterprise value. And that's just the EV to EBITDA multiple multiplied by the EBITDA. Uh, let's go away decimal places. Um, and then uh, we can work out the net debt. Uh, and that's just going to be the year-end loan balance minus cash. Uh, and then the equity value uh, is just enterprise value minus the net debt. Uh, so that's this one here, 95.1 million. Uh, so next question, assume that the LTM net sales uh, were 100 million, so that's here. Uh, the last 12 months depreciation were 2.5 million, that's here. What's the company's net profit margin? Uh, so again, you know, here you're given sort of two, two additional pieces of information, but you also need some of the information that came from up here. So let's just kind of lay it out. Let's start with the EBITDA. Uh, just point up here, uh, and then as as the name suggests, we've got to think about subtracting off uh, interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization to get to net income. So I'll just lay it out in that order: interest, interest, taxes, P&A, uh, and I'm just going to put minus signs on all of these. So that, that one goes to that, and then this one points to that one, uh, and so my net income is just hit all equals uh, and then my net income uh, margin or sorry they call it net profit i'm used to calling it net income but whatever net profit margin is just that divided by your net sales which is this answer here 5.3 percent all right so next question while creating your financial model analyze the results company's net sales were 10 million dollars five years ago now they're 100 million so somewhere oh, I guess I didn't put that one in whoops so I'll put that in here uh, so 2016 and sales was 10 million oh, one more zero all right so uh, net sales 2021 Pull here net sales 2016 there. By the way, the, the thing I'm doing here, I don't know if it actually even saves time at all, but I saw when I was up here that you know this uh, this is here and the next thing I want is two rows down from that. So rather than 
uh, entering a new formula, what I did was copy that down twice so that I now have a formula down here pointing two rows below that, and I just cut and paste that back up. Uh, so anyway, Kager 2016 to 21 is just uh, ending value over the starting value to the power of 1 over 5 number of years minus 1 as a percent, and that's 58.49%, which is this answer here. Uh, can't assume that high a growth rate for the future, no kidding. Uh, so you go with a conservative, I wouldn't have called 20% growth rate uh, conservative, but I guess it depends on your business. Uh, so what's the net sales going to be? Okay, so uh, Kager 2021 to 26, that's this guy here. Uh, and so net sales 2026 is just your starting net sales times 1 plus your Kager to the power of the number of years. Uh, so in this case, it's 248 P32. Uh, and then finally, you've got this information about accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable. I've been trying to kind of keep going these down the line, but actually just in the interest of uh, being next to the assumptions, I'm just going to put it in here. Uh, so the question is, what's the networking capital? Um, now, I'll be honest, on this one, uh, even when I was doing it on the day, um, I'm not used to networking capital as a term. Uh, so in other words, I know that these are all parts of working capital, and I know you know, ups and downs as they relate to changes in working capital. The concept of networking capital is one number, not one I'm really used to. But what you can tell, uh, and the very simple way to think about this is, you know, accounts receivable and inventory are both, um, you know, things that lock up your money. In other words, you, you know, you've, uh, you've sold things and people haven't paid you yet, or you've bought things and you haven't sold them yet. That's all locking up your money. So these, basically, these two go together. Accounts payable is the other way around. In other words, that's kind of freeing up money. Uh, you've, you've bought things, but you haven't paid for them yet. So the, the key thing to understand is these two are going to add together. That one's going to be the opposite sign. So these two add up to 20. So take away that one is 10. So if there had been a minus 10 million option here, I would have had to stop and think a little more. Um, because like I said, this is not just not a term that I'm used to, uh, but the fact that there wasn't made it pretty easy. So networking capital. Um, and I guess if I had thought about it a little bit more, it's reasonably obvious that your working capital is your capital that's locked up in the business. So this is money that's locked up. This is subtracting from that. So that's your answer there. C, 10 million. Okay, so now we're on to uh, second set of assumptions. Um, so another project, da da da, -da. Evaluating the possibility to install new packaging equipment in one of its factories. The initial investment will be 10 million. That's what we've got here. Annual savings of 1.5 million every year for 10 years, and the equipment becomes obsolete at opening. So let's just do it like this. We'll say here, maybe sequence uh, 11 starting at zero. Um, and then uh, uh, cash flow. Uh, and then I'm just going to say equals if this equals zero, then it's minus the investment, otherwise it's that. Uh, and we'll pull up that money. Uh, and so first thing we want is the IRR. So that's just uh, such a label. IRR equals IRR of that. Oopsie. Okay. So that's your 8.14%. Uh, now, their weighted average cost of capital is 12.75% per year. Using this as a discount rate, what is today's value of the $1.5 million cash flow the company will receive in year 10? Okay, so uh, I'm just going to put down my whack over here. So let's say disk factor. Uh, That's going to be uh, 1 over 1 plus your weighted average cost of capital uh, to the power of Uh, so we have DPV, that's just this, times this, and then we're going to cut this formatting. Okay, so what the question was, the present value of what you received in year 10, and that's this one here, 451.779. Uh, then the second question was, what's the NPV? That's just adding these up. Uh, so now one kind of quick sense check here is your IRR is... Uh, is eight percent. Your weighted average cost of capital is. Um, sorry, messing around with my formatting while trying to explain things. I'm just getting confused. Uh, your weighted average cost of capital is higher. So in other words, you're not meeting. Uh, you're not meeting your weighted average cost of capital. So it should definitely be 
as most of the answers here are, should, should definitely be a negative number. Uh, that's your kind of high level sense check. But so here's the answer 1778656. Okay, after deeper analysis, you understand that using this whack is not correct. Uh, the company's going to be using 80% equipment leasing finance at a 5% annual interest rate, the remaining 20% finance with equity, and use a 15% cost of equity for the project. So in other words, this is just a uh, kind of typical whack calculation. So we've got, you know, percent of debt funding at a rate, percent of equity funding uh, at a rate, and then the tax rate. So uh, our, uh, our project discount rate is going to be so it's the uh, percent of debt times the cost of debt times one minus the marginal tax rate because you get your interest rate shield plus percent of equity times cost of equity and that is 5.4 percent which is this answer here moving on uh using the declining method of depreciation for equipment every year they'll depreciate the equipment by 20 percent of the remaining what is it Okay, so normally I would lay out uh, a depreciation schedule with, you know, opening uh, capex, depreciation, closing. Um, but since I'm only interested in, um, oh, sorry, no, I'm interested in depreciation expense and in closing book values. So okay, I should be a little careful there. So let's lay out a couple of columns here. So we'll say depreciation uh, and closing book value. Uh, you could do opening as well to be a little more precise, but we're not going to do it. Uh, so sorry original and I'll just format this color for the rest of the line uh, make this formula uh, and then the depreciation is going to be uh, minus 20% times actually I might have put the wrong 20% there yes I did uh, that one times previous closing book value and it's just this plus this and we uh, so the first question is, what's the depreciation expense in year three? And I get one, two, zero. That's there. And the second question is, closing book value at the end of year five. I think is this, yes. Uh, so three, two, seven, six, eight, hundred. All right, so that all checks out. So the last question uh, is about people buying a house. So they're going to buy a property for $500,000. They're going to pay a 20% down payment uh, mortgage loan for the remaining amount, 25-year term, 2.5% interest rate, equal monthly payments. So uh, the first question is just what's the uh, what is the monthly payment? Uh, so uh, I guess I'll first do loan amount. You could just do all, this all in one formula, but so uh, it's the total minus the down payment. So twenty percent down payment means eighty percent loan amount. That's your four hundred k, uh, and then your uh, payment uh, is going to be PMT. So your rate is going to be the two point five percent divided by twelve because again it's always uh, it's always monthly rate. Uh, number of periods is going to be 25 years again times 12 because your interest in monthly payments. Uh, TV, I'm just going to put a minus sign there to give me a positive payment. Uh, so we get, uh, do we want the decimal places? Yes, we do. So we get 1794.47. Of this amount, how much interest will the couple pay in their second monthly payment? Uh, so second monthly payment. Um, could lay out a full schedule here, but for now I don't yet need to. So I'm just going to get the interest payment, uh, and I copy the formula because almost everything stays the same, uh, except that we add one more argument, which is two for the period number. Uh, so we get 831.33, which is there, good. Um, all right, so then property increases by 2% a year. Uh, after one year, 12 loan payments will be the property's LTV ratio. Okay, so uh, I'll just do a section here after one year. Property value will be this times one plus this, uh, and then loan balance. Uh, again, you could lay out a schedule here. I'm going to uh, be a little precise about it, so I'm going to subtract off the principal payments. Um, actually, sorry, let me reuse some of my formula from up here because, again, most of it stays the same. Save me typing everything out again. So principal payment, and then all I need to put in is the periods, and what I want is the first 10 periods. So, so this will give me, let me just take off the sum and the other page for a second. Uh, this will give me my uh, first 10 principal payments. So then I just sum those up. 
and subtract it from the original loan balance. As you can see, you don't pay much off in the first year of a 25 year mortgage. Uh, and then we want the LTV, which is this divided by this, 0% to two decimal places, 76.53, not among the answers. Interesting. Don't be wrong. Okay, well, now I'm perhaps going to be humbled and shown that I have to lay out a schedule. One year, forward interest per value of 2%. Oh, sorry. No, I'm being an idiot. Uh, I've done 10. Why did I think there are 10 months in a year? I have no idea. Anyway, fine. Uh, so 76.14. That's more likely. Okay. So I'm not quite being made to uh, to do a whole schedule. All right. So last question. Um, they don't want to sign until they're fully committed. They're worried about the rate going up. Uh, the most, biggest monthly payment they can afford is 2,500. What's the highest rate they can absorb? So this one, uh, I'm just going to do goal C because that's the fastest way. I don't think doubt there's any dynamic way to solve this because it's like a I don't know, polynomial of four to twenty-five by twelve or something wild. Um, so anyway, we're gonna set this to uh, I'm sorry, I can't link to that, so let's do this uh, by changing the interest rate. Uh, looks like they can absorb quite a bit higher interest rate. They can go up to five point six eight. Um, sorry, this one here. And I think that's yeah, that's the last question. All right, so um, yeah, I don't know. This this stuff here, the kind of classic uh, corporate finance stuff, is always where I'm a little, uh, little foggiest on my theory, because it's been a long time. This you know, debt modeling and, and depreciation modeling, that stuff I find, find easier to do. But anyway, that's what I got. Uh, if you're competing this weekend, then good luck. See you next time.